This is uh, Liberty rear end. It's the Chrysler uh, corporate eight and a quarter inch rear end. It's going to get swapped into this Comanche here. Uh, I'm going with this axle for a couple of reasons. First one is I have it, so I don't have to buy something else. And second is that it fits the bill for what I need. Um, corporate eight and a quarter is a fairly strong axle. I don't run super big tires on any of my Jeeps, so this will work fine for the 245, 75s I'm going to run on this Jeep. It's uh, disc brake rear already, so that's nice. This one is uh, 373 gearing, which also works out for what I want with limited slip. Um, so it's a pretty common axle, easy to find at junkyards, um, certainly cheap enough. I've got it all cleaned up, ready to go in. I've got the old brackets cut off, you see the tubes bare. These are the couple things you'd have to cut off if you want to use it. The control arm bracket over here shot bracket might be able to reuse it and the coil spring perch which is pretty much trash so I'll probably keep the shock bracket around in case I can find a use for it welding it back on but I did buy some new uh, shock tabs for wherever I end up needing to put that I will have to put my spring perch right in here all this stuff so I don't know if I'll be able to reuse this brake line yet or not otherwise you see the uh, t-junctions in the same place as the original axle has a rear diff speed sensor might come in handy for somebody since this axle is out of a 2005 it's got a single speed sensor on the rear diff there but if you go to 2006 the Liberty's had traction control and along with that as part of the updated traction control and analog brakes it has two rear speed sensors so uh, I don't know what the what the ratios are like on the tooth count but potentially uh, one of these axles from 2006 might work uh, swap into an XJ and keep the ABS working. Uh, I don't know, I haven't tried that, it takes some more research, but it's a possibility. I'm going to keep this axle as spring under. I don't want to go too, too tall with the lift, and putting that spring on top of the axle ends up going much, much taller than I really want to go with this Jeep. So, uh, original stock setup, going to swap that in. I was getting ready to do it today. But unfortunately, the uh, brackets I've got for it, the kit from Rough Stuff, came in. And I didn't realize this, but I got the wrong size perch there. As you can see, that's quite a bit of play. And I was going, oh, maybe you're supposed to just weld fill it or clean that up a little bit so it sits tighter. But before I started grinding on it, I emailed them. They said, yeah, we sent you the wrong ones. We'll get some new ones shipped out to you and uh, just return these when they come in so still be a little while later but they were quick they got back to me just less than 24 hours later and already processed it to send it out but uh, unfortunately can't put it in today but that's okay i guess i'll just wait a little bit longer one of the other things you'll notice about this axle is that on the front it's got a flange so this will take your regular 1310 u-joint uh, that your xj axle would have but it's got a bolt down flange so I like this, it's easier to put on. I think it's better than those than the straps or caps. It certainly gives you a nice interface for it. So if you do get uh, this axle at a junkyard as a donor, pick up the flange to go with this and you can install it into your drive shaft. Uh, plus side of that, or maybe a downside for somebody, is that that would also make your drive shaft just a hair a bit longer, which might be nice for lifted Jeeps or for anybody doing an aftermarket drive shaft with a slip yoke. So there it is. Overall, pretty good looking axle for me. Uh, maybe not the strongest one out there, but I don't need that. I don't need something much stronger than this anyway. So this will fit the build perfect and it'll work out well with where I want to be geared.